Yeah. Things that are currently confusing me in the, the music world. Lil Wayne is making a rock album. That's something I could live without. I heard a, a snippet of the, the new single. It's called Prom Queen. And I was just waiting for it to be over with. I mean, okay. Some people are fans of his. I'm not one. But, uh, it's like, that is something that some things just should be left alone. And I think, like, tattoo covered dudes from Louisiana should never, ever, ever do metal. Same as if, like, Sebastian Bach from Skid Row put out a hip hop album. I don't think people would really be feeling it. So please, y'all should just stay in your lane. Something else that confuses me clean versions to dirty songs that are not released on albums. Why put out a clean single if you're not going to put out a whole re-edited clean album? All you're going to do is get played on the radio and like kids will hear the record and want to buy the record and then buy the record and then get totally confused. Years ago, when people first started putting out clean singles, I remember very clearly being in a Kmart and this guy had came in to return an album. He had bought an edited version of an old Dirty Bastard album. And I remember thinking to myself, how is it even possible for, them, for there to be an edited version of an old Dirty Bastard album? You would have to edit his name off of the album too. And a few days ago, I was talking to my brother and I was thinking about this song because I had the chorus to this song stuck in my head. I did not remember where I heard it. And I was like, oh wait, we, we had went to like this teen show at a rec center years ago. And this band named Lyric, who vanished into the sunset, but if y'all feel the need to Google them and find out who they are, feel free to do so. They came, they were one of the three bands that were performing, and they did a song called Hot and Tipsy. Now at the time, I really wasn't paying attention to the lyrics, I was too busy taking in the sights of whatever was going on at this disaster. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, so I play the song now, being in sound mind and fully aware of all the lyrics, everything that's going on in the song, and I'm like, this is about a drunken one night stand. So I'm like, dude, you remember the song Hot and Tipsy? And he's like, eh? And I'm like, you remember the... Da, 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 da. So I'm going through the whole situation with him. And he's like, yo, I thought it was hot and tasty. And I'm like, no, listen to the song. Listen to the song now. The chorus is like, I got hot and tipsy. Baby, it's a one-night stand. They mentioned Alizé in the song. They mentioned all kinds of things. It was like mad curse words. And I'm like, yo, dude. Why are they singing about a freaking one night stand in a room full of teenagers? And he's like, I don't know, I didn't even think about it at the time. And I'm like, yo, did they have a clean version of that? There was a clean version of that single. Totally threw me off. I'm like, see, that's one thing. Clean albums, kind of necessary now. Eventually, I think the way that censorship is going, they will only have clean versions of albums in record stores and you will have to like go somewhere to get the actual album because I mean it's just it's just there's too much sex everywhere have you watched late night television I mean the commercials are great you got insight you got extends you got the creepy old lady talking about the personal touch vibrators and all of that stuff pretty freaking nasty who wants to hear an old lady talk about touching herself I don't want to hear about an old lady touching herself that's strange as hell and the couple in the freaking Extends commercial is just so strange because he's all old and she's all skeevy looking. And he's like, I didn't really care about what it did. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's some bull deal. The whole commercial is just a bunch of shenanigans. Absolute ridiculous nonsense. And they always put it on while you're eating, like them herpes commercials. Make me sick. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, ma. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty! Just say no to herpes commercials at dinner time. Men better step it up. And men better step it up. Yes, my mother says men better step it up. I, everybody needs to step up to something. 
Why does Keisha Cole start yelling the name of male R&B singers at the end of Play Your Cards, right? That is the most random, outlandish thing ever to be done at the end of an R&B song. I ask people every other day, I'm like, why is she yelling niggas' names out? They're like, I don't know. This song is about, you know, I guess acting normal to maintain a relationship. And then the, the end of the song comes, you expect her to start yelling nonsense because that's what R&B singers do, yell crazy runs that are like notes. It's kind of like doo-wop, but not really. But she starts yelling, Luther Vandross and Teddy, Teddy. And I'm sitting there like, she talking about Teddy Pendergrass. I wonder how many people know she talking about Teddy Pendergrass. I'm like, wait, is she going to yell Marvin Gaye? I was waiting for her to yell Marvin Gaye. She didn't yell Marvin Gaye, which kind of got me heated. But I'm sitting there like, yo, why is this bitch yelling people's names? If somebody knows the answer to that, please hit me up. I want to know. <laughs>